Hello guys, welcome back to the part 2 of our Stripe payment processing in a REST API environment using the Django REST framework and um, React. Alright, so in our previous video, we were able to go to accept payments using the Stripe hosted pre-built checkout page, which was very easy for us to set up. And, but in this very video, we're going to see how we can use the custom payment flow. Right. In using the custom payment flow, the back end and the front end are actually built by us using what we call the stripe elements or using elements elements are ui components given to us by stripe or provided by stripe to build out our own custom checkout page on the web so it's part of the stripe javascript library so if you go to the documentation you can see it says and learn how to embed a custom stripe payment form in your website or application you say the clients and the server side could build a checkout page form with elements all right to all right if you open the stripe element documentation you say create your own checkout flow with pre-built ui components and you can read more about it this is a set of components you have here you can see we have various kind of elements that we can use to build out our own checkout page we have the payment element the payment element allows you to able to, allows you to implement um, multiple payment methods all right, including a card payment, maybe you want to implement card payment, you want to implement maybe Apple Pay and some other um, payment uh, platform. You can use the, um, have the wallet button. This is for you to use kind of some kind of a wallet like Google Pay and so on. And we have the card element, which allows you to accept only card payments only. You will be using the payment element, all right? The reason why I'm using the payment element, I've checked um, YouTube and it seems that there's no good tutorials that shows you how to use the payment element. The cart element is very easy to set up and there are kind of some tutorials that will help you that to set up so complicated and there's no resources there online. So it actually took me a while to come up with a solution. So that's why I want to share it with you guys. All right, so if you enter the payment elements you read more about it and uh, have a good understanding of how to implement it but why i show you how you can do that on code so let's go back to our code and please if you've not subscribed please kindly hit the subscribe button it will really help this channel to grow it doesn't cost you money to subscribe please subscribe so that this channel can grow and uh, this video can reach a larger audience and don't forget to like the video more tutorials are coming all right guys so let's start so wait we, let's head back to the documentation because the documentation is still a perfect guide regardless of how we implement it so if you check it's a set of our server first for install stripe we've already done this in a previous video and um, then you say we need to create a payment intent at an endpoint on your server that creates a payment intent the payment intent tracks the customer payment life cycle. All right, so payment intent endpoint is the easy prepayment action. It's a way to track the customer payment life cycle. All right, so this actually is an endpoint that we're going to set up that will return the client secret. All right, so we're going to send a, a, a post request to Stripe with some data about the products I want to purchase and the stripe will return for us what we call the client secret in our response and at that client secret it's like a unique token to identify the customer who wants to make payment and using that secret to complete the payment all right so if you read more it says keeping track of any uh, faith payment attempt or ensuring the customer is only charged once say so return this uh, payment intent client secret in the response to finish the payment all right it says the payment method that we want to accept all right like i said before the payment elements can accept multiple payment method like card and uh, apple pay or bank transfers and so on and so forth so how can configure the payment method you say with the automatic underscore payment method enabled stripe automatically detects the payment method relevance to your customer it's a card payment are enabled by default 
but you can enable or disable other payment method in the stripe dashboard right so if you want to accept multiple payments like card bank transfer or some other payment you have to set that up in your stripe and dashboard so if you click on the stripe dashboard you log into your stripe dashboard this is like you can see it's a managed payment method without code you can see how it gives us instructions on how to set up our payment method and the card payment is set up by default and look at other payments that we can enable all right the apple pay and the google pay alipay and wechat pay. click of a button all right so that is all to how you can set up your payment with the once you just turn it on automatically the this particular um, line of codes automatic payment method once you set this enable any of the payment method that you enable there will be displayed in your checkout element all right so that's that so once we do that so let's quickly create a payment intent endpoint now if we point code and create and this is going to accept a post request because we are sending a post request let's pass for now and head back to her instructions that they are giving us we have our stripe secret key already set up and then if you come down here you can see the endpoints that create payments here you're getting a request of data which can be the id of the products that we want to pay for all right so once we have that id we can query for the product from our back end have that product then intent we say the stripe using that stripe payment intent or create and we're passing the amount passing the currency or passing the automatic payment method all right so these are the basic requirement that we can pass to this um, payment intent to create though there are other options depends on how you want to set what you want to and uh, what you want in the payload of the payment intent of our uh, client secret return to us that is the major thing we need from our request so let's convert this actually this example was done in flash so we can convert this to a python to a jingo and um, endpoint let's get our product id so we're sending this from front end and once we have the product id you can check if we want to get the product by saying product so once we do that we can create a trial and a set block we want to create the intent which is equals to stripe we need to pass in the amount yes we need the currency and the automatic payment method so bring that in all right so we have automatic payment method then if you want to provide maybe any other extra parameters you can check the documentation we can pass in the metadata like we did that so once we have a return a response let's go secret it's 200 but if we have an exception we want to also return another response for some reason we just want the string representation of the exception all right so that's our payment intent create payment intent endpoint so we need to bring this into our URA all right to avoid kind of conflicts when running this code I will try and commit this first endpoint out so that's our new uh, URA all right so that's all for our back end right now so we head over to our front end and then uh, back to our front end which is our react app we're going to make a lot of changes here first we create a new component it's our component so that we we'll call it checkout and uh, we can create another one called payment form so in this component let's just spin up a simple react react and checkout components we need the use dates component and the use fit component and uh, sorry hooks i mean also we need to install javascript library to spin up this yeah this library so we need to install it say npm install this is installing 
let's continue bringing out things we need these two imports which is the load stripe and the elements so you can just grab this two input having that in our strike and check out here we can proceed to create a simple state all right we have that installed we also need to import the use params from react water done because we need that to get the id of the product from our url so that we can send it along with our request because remember the back end we are expecting the product id so we see that our stripe package is installed with stripe js and the stripe as react and js all right that's fine so what we need to do is we need to bring in this and load stripe all right so we're going to create a variable called stripe promise Call the low stripe and pass in a public key. All right, so I know for security reasons, you're not supposed to probably pass any kind of token or keys directly into your app. So there are a couple of ways you can bring in your public key, maybe by making a kind of a simple config request to your backend to retrieve the public key and display it here. Or maybe you set up a an environment variable in your front end where you're passing your public key. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to pass in the public key like this. Next, we need to get the product ID as first. So let's see, we can do that by the structuring product. We won't see any ID yet because we've not set up this route and uh, the route for this checkout page. So the log E, then Secondly, we want to call the use effect. So the use effect is like a hook that represents that replaced uh, the component it marked in a class based component. So I believe you guys are familiar with that. So this is the code that will run whenever this component loads and with a condition that causes this. So in this place is where we are going to make request to our backend to create the payment intent so we can get the payment intent secret the javascript fresh library so let's just see how to do that here so we can just copy this fetch request all right same thing so just copy this fresh request and api making a request to change these endpoints to be our own backend endpoint which all right so that's our backend endpoint then we is making a post request, the header content type. This one we don't need to pass in any token. The body, which is ought to be our own product ID, is not going to be an object. We are not passing an object. We are just passing a product ID. We get the respond, the JSON, and retrieve the data from the respond. And we are setting the client secret state into data dot uh, client secret all right also dot log the client client secret all right so you need to make sure that you're getting this client secret from your back end because without this client secret you won't be able to render the stripe element ui component all right so let's check if we can get this now so before we do that um and bring in this check out to js into our app to js yeah so we're going to making changes to this we don't need this anymore or this neither we making this anymore so we are taking this out right on its own so first let's bring in the element right so we have this so two things we want to check for we want to check if we can get the client secret that depends on if we can get the product id i think this is in our url but let's take out this all right our server is running perfectly right, one last thing before we check or before we test if we can get our secret key is in the product page all right we need to make some few changes here like in this checkout button we're no longer making this form, so we need to take this out. And then we're going to add an on click event handler. We're going to add an on click 
event and we're going to be passing a simple function called handle click function yet so we need to create this function and it's simply going to redirect to the checkout page so we need to import from react DOM. we need to import the use navigate use navigate call and also we need the id coming directly from our database because that's trusted so we need to pass in an id so default we can just perhaps make it zero because when we grab in the product okay we set state passing in the data all right so if we console log our state we should have the id passed in so we can have product id all right so in here we want to navigate once we click we want to navigate which is a redirect to our own URL, which we're going to use back ticks and URL want to navigate to a slash checkout the id which is going to be the so we're going to navigate to this particular URL. click the checkout button it should redirect us to this endpoint sorry to this route handle that later on so once we have here yeah, we can go to slash perfect we are getting our product so let's open our right now we are not getting okay we're just getting the object fine we'll see let's take that out of our console page once we click this checkout it will direct us to this checkout page and you can see we are getting the product id and we are getting the client secret that heading back to our checkout page now we have the client secret in our state here we want to construct our elements so in here we want to bring in the stripe element right so in here is when we're going to pass in the form component we've not created our component yet so the payment form components which is going to be a component where we want to render the payment element. So we'll pass that in. Aside that, we need to pass in the Stripe promise. In here, it has a props called Stripe. Um, let me check. Yes, we have that here, Stripe promise. And the second props we need to pass in is the client secret. So we're going to do that by creating the option this option is expressing the client to come in from our state and we're going to pass this option into our element created all right so that's that so let's handle this payment um, form component and uh, coming to the checkout form.js we need to import some things from react from the uh, stripe React JavaScript library, which is the payment elements, the use stripe, and the use element. So let's grab this from here, paste this in. We also need the state, and then we need these states, these two states, the message state and this loading state. So let's grab this also. So the form, let's grab the form also the payment form which has this idea of payment form and then the uh, on click on submit sorry we need to create this uh, handle submit function so this is the payment element that we are using which is the stripe element which we imported from the stripe react and this button the submit button now we are create we are disabling the submit button if it's loading and if it's not stripe and if it's not element now this use stripe and use element is a hook provided by stripe to actually communicate with the instance and the element instance all right so see how we are checking if the stripe instance has not loaded and if the element instance has not loaded we don't want to be able to submit all right so all right so let's grab the css for this spinner and uh, the css for this payment form i guess I think they provided the styles to if you go to yeah the styles are here you can see the style for the spinners and so let's just copy from the form save this 
Shall I head back to our documentation and see what next we can take him from there? So we have our stamp. That's fine. I'm heading back to our app here. We render the payment element which is coming from Stripe. We need to create an instance of these two here. The same counts. Right, so we have these two. That's what we are using in this case. Create the handle submit. Yeah, and call it. And this is going to take the event parameter. And first of all, we need to prevent default. So once we prevent default, let's see how they handle the submit. What Stripe did was that they handled the sources and uh, everything on one page. So we are not going to be handling the sources um, here. So when the payment is successful, we want to redirect to our message component, which is going to render whatever uh, success message that we want. So we're going to take this out. You don't need that. So inside the handle submit, Let's see how they do that. First of all, the Stripe JS has not yet loaded. Make sure to disable form submit until Stripe has loaded. So you say if not Stripe and if not element, we want to return. So we need this. Why not? So we bring that in. Secondly, we want to also set loading. So if that is the case, we we'll set the loading to true. All right, so we need to make this an async function. If we head back, we need to confirm the payment now. So once the user clicks the button and the Stripe instance has loaded, the element has loaded, we've collected the payment details. We need to confirm the payments. Since we already have the client secret already passed to the element, all right? Now, if you look at this form, this documentation is a little bit confusing. You see what they did here, they were retrieving the Stripe the retrieve payment uh, intent, passing the secret keys and all that. This was supposed to be done in the success page, right? This is a post payment actions. So once we've confirmed the payment, and probably you provide the return URL, this is the URL that uh, the payment complete page. If is in this page, is in this page that we're supposed to perform this action. Uh, when the payment is complete, you see that. Uh, after you've gone to the payment complete page, Stripe will pass the client secret to the URL with this uh, query parameter, which is the payment underscore intent underscore client secret. This will be passed to our URL in the payment complete page. After you've confirmed the payment okay, and also the intent ID. All right, so what they did here is they probably retrieved the client ID from the URL using these uh, URL search params getting it with these queries and once they have it you can retrieve your payment intent object all right so once you retrieve the payment intent object probably you want to display some kind of payment or seed message on your success page you're supposed to perform these actions so but we are not because stripe is using one page for both success and uh, form and all that that's why they uh, place this here so don't get confused so that might be, is this confirmed so we need to confirm our payment uh, Await stripe dot confirm payment. We pass in the element instance because this, and we use the convert confirm um, payment parameters, which we pass in our success URL. So when the payment returns successful, when we have payment succeed event, we should be able to redirect to a payment succeed or payment complete URL. You can see it here. Say so make sure to change this to to your payment complete page. So in this case, our own page is going to be something like um, success. So once the payment is tied to that route, error, we need to check if there's an error. So if we try to confirm the payment and maybe the payment was not successful, we want to bring it on. So go back to that document. We need to check, grab this, check if the event type is equals to card error or card dot, uh, error dot type equals to validation error. We want to set the message component to the error message. So we'll grab this stripe the confirm payment and we are checking if the error dot type is cut error and we're displaying setting our message to the errors and all that then setting is and uh, loading to false so that's all we need to do in here all right 
So that's what we need to do in here. So what we need to do is to construct our success a page um success uh, route. So in our success page here, we're gonna change some things. Let's just change this to a simple and uh, let's say thanks. I want to display this info message. So we need to make this a component on its own. So we'll go back to our app.js. And here we want to just create this success route. All right, so we have our success component. Once we've done this, we can, it's not defined in checkout. So let's check our import. Oh, we did import. We need to import, see if we can I'll refresh everything. Okay. Uh, I can server still running. So if we hit the checkout, it's trying to fetch our form, so we're getting some errors. Let's check. You see on code promise integration error invalid value for elements. So let me quickly check and why we are having this error. All right, the reason why we are having that error is the element cannot display except there's a client secret already in existence. So first of all, we need to make sure that the client secret has already arrived before we can display the element. So in this place, in the uh, checker.js, we need to check by saying client secret. If there's a client secret, we want to display this element. Check if there's a client secret, render this form. So if we save this now and head back, you can see the form is already showed up already. But let's just go back and come back, start fresh. So let's reload the state and the component. So once we hit the checkout, in this place, you see at first the client secret was empty. But once the API request was complete, the client secret was populated with the client secret before the function was. So at that instance, we need to first of all set is loading. We have to provide maybe some loading components that will be loading before the client secret arrives from the request. So once the client secret arrives from the request, the Stripe element will show up. So we have our Stripe element. You can see the cards form. You can see the expiring date and all that country. And this phone is looking all right. So I believe we can test it out now if we fill this form. Um, let's see if we can complete the payment. So let's use the Stripe test card, which is the... All right, so the country is already set. So once we hit the payment, you can see our spinner is showing up. Uh, all right, you can see we are able to redirect to the success page with our success message that says, thanks for positioning our product, payment was successful. And if you check the URL, you see the payment intent ID was passed and also the payment underscore intent that our client secret was also passed what they were doing there so you can retrieve the client secrets from the url after the payment are success is successful and retrieve maybe the payment intent and for that case you can display maybe some kind of information to your user in the success page you can see the example they did here they just display an alert message of payment succeeded then they, when it's processing we say payment your payment is processing and all that so you can do this in your success page if you want to but we just have our own default message already in our payment uh, in our payment uh, message uh, page. All right, so just to keep it simple, we don't have this. Uh... All right, you can see the payment was succeeded. We received twenty dollars in our Stripe account, and you can see the date and time matches. All right. So that means our payment was successful. So we can set up our webhook. I already did that to show you how to set up webhook. Uh, you can still use that webhook, but you just have to change the event because the event that is being sent at this time is the payment intent that succeed, not longer checkout session that succeed. Uh, changes here. The only changes we need to check change is in this event, we are no longer listening for session.complete. We are listening for Payment intent is uh, succeeded. That's the only change you need to make. And 
this time we are not retrieving any email because we are not passing any email you can also pass your email you want to send an email to the user you can if you go back to your and let's move further you say congratulations your payment is ready but if you want to send an email receipt stripe can send an email receipt for your customer using your brand logos and custom and color team which are configured in the dashboard so you can actually do this in the dashboard what you just need to do is to find a way to provide the customer's email you can do that in the back end when you are creating the payment intent maybe we already have a sign up a signing user we can do that when we are creating our payment argument here which is guess I'll pass it maybe to the request or user dot email that's if we have a user authentication built in then we can pass this in on our server and provide the user's email if we have that maybe user application maybe user dot uh, request dot user dot email we can provide that but we don't have a user email so we leave that out of it or maybe you want to collect the email from the front end maybe you want to attach an email feed to the form so that when the user is providing their um, payment credentials they can provide the form along with it they can provide the email along with it attach the receipt email you can see it here and um, you provide a form inside the form just provide a single feed of an email id and a value passing the email on chain you set a state we just create a simple state to receive the email and passing the email from the form so enter your email you can do this from the front end and pass the receipt email with the email all right so why stripe if you set in on a dashboard stripe will help us and send the receipt email to this user or we can receive this received email from the uh, back end like i said earlier and maybe send our own custom email uh, when the webhook event comes like we number like we did in the previous um, video all right content uh, payment intent so in our webhook we are no longer uh, we can print the intent out to see what the intent returns to us intent in here So intent the metadata dot but first let's just commit this out. Let's print out the payment intent from our webbook and see what the intent actually returns for us. Change also the events that we are listening for is so we are listening if payment intent is considered we want to get the intent and print it out. So let's just save this and uh, attach our webbook endpoints to Stripe by saying Stripe will be localhost. All right, so API slash webhook, this. So it's ready, it's ready to receive our webhook. We can see our client secret, uh, our endpoint secret, which we did in our previous video. So if you don't really know how to set up webhook, just check the previous video, which is the part one of this uh, payment series, slash one, which is our product page. All right, so let's go refresh. That's okay. Click check out. Take some time. So we'll provide a loading component here, but we don't have a loading component. So once it loads our form, we can process the payment again. Okay. All right. We have time event. We can see the events that was returned. We have the payment intended associate. And we have the charge to succeed, but we're actually listening for the payment intent to succeed. So let's check the intent that was printed. out. You can see the, the intent objects that was printed out to us. You can see the parameters. You can see extra arguments that the extra parameters that you can pass to your payment when you are creating your payment intent. If you, maybe you will need more details like the shipping, maybe you want to pass in some shipping address you can pass it to this place where you are creating your payment intent so that you can retrieve it from the intent and use it to perform some certain actions all right so look at this just screw up look at we have our metadata which provide our the invoice all these are known by default we just have our currency all right let's retrieve uh we just want to retrieve the product id get the product and create a very simple payment history that's all we want to do now create another variable called payment intent 
which will be the intent the charges the data like we said so earlier which is a list we just want to retrieve the first the very first object in the list because it's only one object in that list so we retrieve the very first object in the list once we have that we can comment their product id to get a product id but this time it's not going to be intent it's going to be the product id once we have the product id we can get the product we just paid for and we can create the payment history all right so like we did earlier create a payment history and that will be fine so if we save this and then everything is cool let's test it one more time and we go to log into our admin go to our products page load and we click our checkout so loading load. test one more time we so if we hit the payment all right we have thank you and go to payment history you can see a new payment history was created all right we didn't add a 10 stamp to it a new payment history was created we have a new payment history if you check your events you can see the payment events so seed was sent and um, everything is working fine so we're able to create a payment history you can try it one more time to just have a confirmation that the new payment history was created new payment history was created it's the pay now so we dashboard we're having three so if we refresh you can see we are having four a new payment history was created so everything is working fine all right guys so that's enough for this video there are a lot of things you can actually do in this custom payment you can actually go through the documentation and see a lot of things you can do like customizing the appearance you can do that also you can do a lot of things you can decide to save your card so i won't be doing that so you can decide to save your payment details to use for maybe a recurring payment you can see step to actually do that and that's that so thank you guys for watching this video and uh, don't forget to subscribe don't forget to give this video a thumbs up see you, see you guys in our next video